time for your daily down the middle explanation of world news. This is CNN 10 and I'm Carl Azus. Thank you for watching. In the United States Senate, an impeachment trial is set to begin Tuesday for former U.S. President Donald Trump. Last month, the House of Representatives voted to charge President Trump with incitement of insurrection. His accusers say his statements at a large rally on January 6th inspired some of the people there to later riot at the U.S. Capitol building. His supporters say the former president only called for a peaceful protest. It's now up to the Senate to decide whether to find the former leader guilty or not guilty. The chamber's 100 senators will serve as jurors for the trial. The Constitution requires a vote of two-thirds or 67 senators to convict a president. Otherwise, the leader will be found not guilty. There are currently 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans serving in the Senate, and political analysts say it is very unlikely that two-thirds of them will vote to convict the Republican former president. There's also a debate going on about whether it's constitutional to hold an impeachment trial for someone who's no longer in office. Former President Trump's supporters call the trial political theater by Democrats since he's now out of office and a private citizen. But some legal experts say the House impeached him while he was still president and that the Senate has the power to prevent someone from running for office again as well as removing someone from power. So all eyes will be on the Senate in the days ahead. At this point, experts think its trial will be wrapped up within three weeks. New variants or strains of COVID-19 are appearing around the world as it mutates like other viruses do. And one big question being asked is, will existing vaccines protect people against the new versions of coronavirus? The short answer is, scientists don't know yet. One of these new COVID strains was first seen in South Africa, and several drug makers say early tests indicate their vaccines aren't as effective against the South African strain as they are against the dominant strain spreading in the U.S., Two companies, Moderna and Pfizer, say they may develop booster shots if their existing vaccines don't work against new coronavirus strains. America has seen a decrease in recent COVID-19 infections. On Sunday, just over 88,000 new positive tests were reported in the country. It was the first day this year that fewer than 100,000 were reported. But a medical expert told CNN that the U.S. could be in the eye of the hurricane, meaning a decrease in cases that's only temporary because of the new disease variants that are spreading. I'm David McKenzie in Blantyre, Malawi. Scientists now say that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has only minimal effect in preventing mild and moderate versions of COVID-19. The South African government is pausing the rollout of its vaccine. And here in Malawi, they have no vaccines to speak of at all. And the health system is buckling under pressure. We were in the COVID-19 wards where only a few doctors are not sick to help patients get over this brutal second wave. I'm Salma Abdulaziz in London, where future plans are being drawn to deal with future variants. The UK's vaccine minister says an annual booster immunization shot could be used to deal with future variations of coronavirus. This comes as news studies from Oxford University and AstraZeneca show very limited efficacy when it comes to a variant of COVID-19 that's prevalent in South Africa. The scientists at Oxford University behind this vaccine say they plan to have a new form of it that can deal with that South Africa variant by by the fall. I'm Angus Watson in Melbourne, where the Australian Open began with 30,000 tickets on sale on Monday. But stars like Naomi Osaka and Serena Williams played to smaller crowds than expected, with masks optional in the stands. Organisers have been working frantically to try to convince the public that it's safe for the tournament to go ahead. They want 400,000 people to attend the two-week event, with social distancing guidelines firmly in check. Second trivia, which of these African nations is located on the eastern shore of Lake Kivu? Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania, or Zimbabwe? The nation of Rwanda, one of Africa's most densely populated countries, borders Lake Kivu. There's a bird species native to the region that likes to dance. The gray-crowned crane stomps its feet to startle insects from the ground, which the bird then eats. But according to the Denver Zoo, the animals also bust out in flash mob style dancing just because they like it. That's only part of their appeal for a Rwandan conservationist who wants to keep the animals alive. This is not your typical love story. 
But in the lush grasses of this Rwandan nature reserve, romance is in the air. Finding a partner is a process like humans do. They will date, dance for each other, and if they like each other, they will stay together for some time for life. Gray-crowned cranes are an endangered species, facing threats from an illegal pet trade and the destruction of their wetland habitat for agriculture. To help protect these birds, in 2014, the Rwandan government set up an amnesty program for pet cranes kept in captivity with the help of this man, Olivier Nsengimana. We've lost about 80% of the population, and in 2012, we're estimating the population to be around 300 remaining in the wild. I told myself, someone has got to do something about it. Do a quick listen to the breathing and... Uh, Trained as a vet, and Sengimana is the founder of the Rwandan Wildlife Conservation yeah, Association. Hello, buddy. Looks like here we have like a little injury on the toenail. His organization has rescued over 200 cranes from captivity, and more are bred in their facilities, like this juvenile. These are flight feathers. They are really in good shape. But many kept as pets have had their wings broken to prevent their escape and are unable to survive in the wild, finding sanctuary at the organization's nature reserve at Umusambi village. Cranes in Rwanda, they are seen as a symbol of wealth and longevity. So what we've done is really to educate people, tell them, hey, um, actually we could still love them by have them in their natural environment. But if we keep taking them, our kids or grandkids might not be able to see them. And Sengimana remembers his own childhood in a rural village was filled with cranes. We didn't have TV, we didn't have like toys. <laughs> so everywhere we went, we would see like animals. And one of the biggest was a crane. We really took time to watch them, wanting to fly like them. Growing up as a young boy, I had that love for nature. A love he has shared through his work with schools and local community groups since 2014. Educating and inspiring others to protect their environment, he wants Rwandans to feel like the country's wildlife belongs to them. We come from these communities. We have that kind of power to really connect with them and recreate that kind of love and ownership and pride that people have in the animals. That love has taken flight. And Sengimana says there are now over 800 cranes estimated to be in the wild in Rwanda, putting the country's most romantic bird on the path to recovery. This is really a huge success story that we share with all Rwandans that if we work together, if we can bring everyone on board, we can achieve the unachievable. If you're not getting our nightly email, you're not getting a preview of what's on each day's show. I might sound like a salesman, but everything is free. And all you have to do to get our newsletter is click sign up for daily emails near the bottom of our homepage, CNN10.com. When it comes to roller coasters, is there such a thing as too fast? If you said no, then you may want to start planning a trip to Six Flags Kadia. It's set to open near Saudi Arabia's capital in 2023, and it will feature this. A thrill ride called Falcon's Flight that's set to break world roller coaster records for height, length, and speed. How high? 525 feet. How long? Two and a half miles. How fast? 155 miles per hour. Buckle up, y'all because it's on track to feel off the track, flinging first drop fans into a flying, free-falling frenzy that's sure to throw them for a loop as it goes out and back on an elevated airtime dive that gives a lift and tests nerves of steel as it barrel rolls on like a runaway train. Yes. Today's shout-out goes out to Harrison High School. Let's go Hoyas. It's great to see y'all in Kennesaw, Georgia. For a chance to get your school mentioned on CNN 10, please subscribe and leave a comment at youtube.com slash CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus. Thank you.